In Java, it's always been easy to run a method or a piece of code asynchronously. That is, if you have a main method which has a main thread, you can run your task in a separate thread. And you can do this very easily using a code similar to this. So you can create a class, say for example task, which implements runnable. You can override its run method, put the code that you want to run asynchronously. In this case, we are just doing the system.out.println which will print the name of the thread that it is running in. You can create a new thread and with the instance of this particular task and then just start the thread. And the way to visualize this is there is a main thread which performs its operation from top to down. At a certain point in time it will do thread.start and the Java will create a thread named thread-0. This thread will do its own operations and once those operations are done java will kill that thread and the main thread will keep going to extend this if you want to similarly run 10 tasks you can have the same class task which implements runnable but now you can create the threads in a for loop so in this for loop you have i equal to 0 to 10 so it runs 10 times each time it will create a new thread with a new instance of task and will start that thread and the way to visualize this is very similar where java will create threads called thread-0 till thread-9 denoted by t0 to t9 here and once the operations within the run method are complete java will kill those threads to extend this even further what if you want to run 1000 tasks asynchronously the problem here is in java one java thread corresponds to one operating system thread that means if you run the for loop thousand times it will create 1000 threads from t0 to t999 and creating a thread in itself is an expensive operation what you rather want is you want a fixed number of threads say 10 threads you want to create them up front let's call it a pool a pool of threads that's why the name thread pool and let's submit thousand tasks to them and then we want the threads to pick up those tasks complete tasks say for example t0 will pick one task called task 1 it will complete that task and then immediately start with task 2 similarly all the threads will pick up the tasks and execute them and the way to code this is very simple you create a new fixed thread pool using the static constructor or the static method of executors class here we are giving the number of threads as 10 it'll give back the instance variable for executor service and now you use the same for loop that you used earlier but here instead of starting a new thread you can just submit or execute those tasks new tasks using the same service and the way to visualize this is that you have a for loop but in, within the for loop now instead of creating new threads you're just creating new tasks and submitting them to the service and within the service which is the thread pool executor it internally uses a blocking queue in that queue it, it keeps storing all the tasks that you have submitted and all the 10 threads which is t0 to t9 all of them will perform these same two steps the two steps are fetch the next task from the queue and execute it and since all 10 threads attempt to take the task from the queue at the same time that is concurrently you want the queue to be able to handle concurrent operations so you want a queue which is thread safe and that is why a thread pool uses the blocking queue which is thread safe operation so what is the ideal pool size that you want in this example we spoke about having 10 threads and we submitted 1000 jobs which is 1000 tasks so the answer is not simple it depends on the type of tasks you want to execute so let's say you have cpu intensive operations so within the run method you have a particular snippet of code which takes a lot of cpu let's say it's an algorithm to create a hash or an uh, cryptographic function 
in this case the task will take a lot of cpu and in java as i said one java thread corresponds to one os thread right so if you have a cpu with four cores at a time you can have only four threads running so that means no matter how many threads you have here you can have 1000 threads but if your cpu itself can run only four cores at a time it will do a time split scheduling so it will give some time to t0 it will bump it off then it give it will give some time for t1 it will bump it off right so having too many threads is not a particularly good idea when you have cpu intensive operations so in that case the ideal pool size is to have the same number of threads as your number of cores in the cpu so in this case you have only four threads t0 t1 t2 and t3 so that means in a very ideal scenario you can have all four cores running these all four threads and none of the threads are waiting for anything and the code for this is very simple as well all you have to do apart from what we did already is to get the number of available processors where your program is running so in this case uh, you already have a method called runtime dot get runtime dot available processors that will give you the count of cores that your cpu has and then you that particular count you can pass in when you're creating the thread pool and then you can do the same thing of submitting all the tasks to the service using its execute method but there are other kinds of tasks also suppose you have a task which is an io op intensive operation when i say io intensive operation let's say your task is to get some data from the database or your task uh, calls an http url and gets the data from there here what happens is once those requests are made to the database or the http client it will wait for the operating system to get a response and all those threads will go into a waiting state so even though you have four cores there is no point of having only few threads because all the threads are probably waiting for the operation to finish and there are no threads to fetch the next next task and execute it so if your tasks are io intensive which is database calls http calls any network calls then in that case you can have the size of your pool as a large one so let's assume the size of the pool is 100 so you have t0 to t99 so even if you have too many threads t3 t5 t6 t7 and so on in the waiting state you can still have some other threads which are waiting and ready to fetch the task and execute it so once you have decided on the number of threads to use for your pool size you can write the code for this very similar to what we did earlier which is executors dot new fix thread pool and you pass in the number or the higher number that we have decided to be 100 and then the rest of the code remains as is which is have a for loop and do service dot execute and pass in your io intensive task to it so to summarize if your task is a cpu intensive task then the ideal pool size is to have a cpu core count size that is the number of cores available in your cpu but there is a con consideration to be made here if your cpu is also running multiple other applications your application might not get access to all the cores of the cpu so in that case even if you have kept the pool size as say 4 or if it's a server cpu maybe the core size is 16 but if that server is running other applications your application will not get access to all those 16 cores right so there is a consideration to be made similarly if your task is io intensive you can have a higher pool size which will depend on the rate of the task submissions that is how fast you want to submit the new tasks and the average wait time for each task for the io operation to complete so it's a trade-off you don't want too many threads to be in the blocking state neither you want too many tasks to be waiting to be fetched by the threads right because remember if you have too many threads 
then it increases the memory consumption also that's it for this video in the next videos we'll take a look at the type of thread pools that java provides and the life cycle methods for java thread pools thanks for watching